So I've been a tech creator for about three years now and I've always wanted to do one of these EDC videos, but I felt like the stuff that I carried was so basic that nobody would even care. Recently though, because of the videography and all the other stuff that I've been doing, I feel like my EDC has actually gotten a little bit interesting and I've upgraded my bag. So here we go. This is my EDC for 2024. So this video is gonna be a little bit more on the go focused. So this is the bag that I use. It's the Grams 28. I think it's called the Essential Case or maybe Essential Case 2, I'm not sure, but it's a really nice bag. It's made out of leather and it's actually able to fit every single item that I carry on a regular basis in this little case, which is awesome. Are people gonna make fun of it and call it a purse? I mean, some people already have, but personally, I don't care because I like the fact that I don't have to carry all of my bulky items in my pockets anymore. I've got everything inside this bag super organized. And in my opinion, it looks nice and goes with pretty much anything. So this bag is made out of leather. If you've never heard of Grams 28, um, all their products are leather products. And I think that they do a fantastic job. Everything looks super, super premium. So if you zip this open here, as you can see, there is a ton of different compartments, spaces. You've got this uh, middle zip compartment here. When you open it up, you've got even more space inside and more compartments to use as well. So you're able to have all of your items very nicely organized when you use this case. Obviously I've taken everything out because we're gonna go over all of my items one at a time, but I don't know, I just like that, you know, like I said, everything's in one spot. I don't have to worry about filling my pockets with a ton of stuff. If I want to find something, I know exactly where it is at all times and it just looks good as well. The other thing is it's got these two uh, metal clasps on the back for the strap, which I think is really nice, very premium. You don't have to worry about these breaking or bending or anything like that. They look good, they feel good. And overall, there's honestly nothing bad that I can say about this case. Again, that is the essential case, I believe it's called by grams 28. Well, this one comes as no surprise. This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And on the back of it, because I don't really like using cases so much this year, I've got the Nomad Leatherback case. It's not really a case. I really like this guy because as I said, it's not a case. It doesn't take up a lot of space or add much weight to your phone, but still has that protection because it is a hard back. It's got the MagSafe ring as well. And then suction cups that keep it adhered to your phone in addition to that MagSafe. So once you put this thing on, honestly, it really doesn't move. I like how it stays in place. I think it looks nice, especially the way that the navy blue and the rustic brown sort of accent each other. I think it looks really good. And the more you beat it up, the better it looks in my opinion. So there's nothing wrong with that. Now moving on to the iPhone itself. I went with the navy blue iPhone 15 Pro Max. I wish I waited and went for the titanium. Uh, at the time that I was ordering this, the titanium was so hard to get that I was like, I just want to order anything and get it in as soon as possible. And it's not to say that I don't like this color, but I made a video about it before. The scratches that are starting to come through on the edges, they come through as silver underneath. So I've actually changed my SIM port to match the scratches on the phone, just so that it looks more intentional. But overall, great phone. I've been enjoying this. I know some people will have issues with the battery health slash battery life. I've not had many issues with that. You know everything there is to know about iPhone anyway, so we don't have to go too much in depth as far as this goes. But yeah, this is my daily driver phone or one of my daily driver phones because we're gonna cover the next one in just a second. And that next phone is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. And again, right off the bat, I love this phone. This phone is actually amazing. My SIM card typically stays in this phone here and I just create a hotspot and hotspot it over to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I do not make enough money to be having two SIM cards and two separate phone numbers, all that stuff. Doesn't make sense for me, but the fact that I love Android so much and I still love Apple and the ecosystem and just works in my workflow, it's kind of hard not to want to carry both phones and without the carrying case that I use or without the tech bag that I use, you can see how it'd be annoying to have a 15 Pro Max massive phone and the S24 Ultra massive phone in both jeans pockets while walking around. Uh, this phone honestly though has been fantastic. If you've not had a chance to try it or maybe you've only ever been iPhone and you're kind of curious about Android and how things work, this is in my opinion the most premium Android phone that you can get. It does everything well 
Um, there's really not much to want when you have this phone other than the fact that social media is kind of weird on it still. Um, I don't know how after all this time it's not properly optimized um, when it comes to like posting a photo on Instagram and having it look the way that it did when you took that picture. I don't know what's going on there and a bunch of other little quirks too, but overall fantastic phone and I love carrying this on me. Oh, and before I forget, same thing with this colorway that happened with the navy blue. I really wanted the titanium. I think the titanium looked so, so sharp, but it sold out so fast and I was like, I just want to get my hands on the S24 Ultra. So I ended up going with this purple and there's really not much wrong with the purple. Like I like it, but then anytime I see that titanium or I put this beside someone that has a titanium, I'm just like, man, is there any way that I could like break this and use my Samsung care to replace it with a titanium one? I just think it looks so sharp. And if I would have had both uh, titanium colored phones, I think that would have been really cool. Next up are the earbuds that I carry. So because I carry two phones, I also carry two sets of earbuds. So I've got the AirPods Pro 2s, unfortunately still the Lightning Edition. And then I've got the Pixel Buds Pro 2s, I think that's what they're called as well. I really like these earbuds. At first, I wasn't too sure about them. Like something about just the way that they looked kind of threw me off uh, before ever even trying them. And for whatever reason, I wasn't really interested in any of this earbuds that Samsung has to offer. And I did have a Google Pixel, well, I still do have my uh, Google Pixel 8 Pro back there. So that's what I originally bought these for. Um, but then once I tried them for the first time, the sound quality on these is excellent. Like I, I personally like the sound quality of these better than my AirPods Pro 2s. However, where the AirPods Pro 2s excel is the fact that they have way, way better noise canceling. And so the overall use of these, I think, is better. On the front here, I've got some kind of Spigen. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's a Spigen clasp that's supposed to help keep your case closed if you drop this or, or whatever the case might be. I keep it on just because I think it looks cool. It differentiates my AirPods from everybody else out there that has them. And I like that I have to be very intentional to open the case now. You can't just flip it open. You actually have to press down and flip it open like that. So you can hear the little click there. Um, so yeah, those are the two earbuds that I carry. I wish my case was a little bit bigger so that I can carry some over the ears, in which case it would probably be the Sony XM5s because I really do like those super lightweight. I love the way that they sound. Although I do have the AirPods Max as well. They just don't fold up. So they're impossible to put in anything other than that carrying case and then a backpack. Next up, we've got the power bank that I carry. This is the Anchor 533 power bank. Uh, I believe it charges up to 30 watts is the fastest speed. So you've got two ports on this guy here or two USB-C ports rather and a USB-A port. One thing that I do really like about the 533 is that there's this little button on the side and if you press that button it lights up it has the anchor screen and then it shows you how much battery is actually left on this battery itself uh, i've had so many in the past that use the little led lights and you're constantly wondering is this at 50 percent? is it at 26 percent? like i have no idea what this is at and you plug it in thinking you're going to get you know a nice 50 percent charge on your iphone or whatever phone you might have and it ends up dying in like five minutes. So I bought this for that reason. Well, two things I don't like about this power bank. One, it's extremely expensive. I think the price was like $70 Canadian, something to that effect. Way too expensive for what this is. I think it only has, where is it? 5,000 milliamp hours. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's gonna charge your iPhone once in a bit, which for that price, I don't think is enough. That's the first thing. The charging speeds are good when it comes to the output, obviously at 30 watts, but the time that it takes to actually charge the power bank itself, I think is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know if mine is faulty or if what I'm using to charge it is faulty, or maybe I'm not you know, charging with the right wattage, whatever the case is, I don't know, but this thing takes forever to charge. So I find I do my best not to use it unless it's an absolute emergency. Like if I were to need to charge my phone right now, I know some people will be lazy enough to just, you know, connect this immediately with the USB-C cable, connect it to your iPhone, give it a little bump, and then go about your day. I won't do that. I'll go the extra mile, go to an outlet, 
use my charge over here, whatever the case is, to always keep this juiced because I hate how long it takes to fill it up. So the next one is a really fun one. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This camera has gotten so much hype. Like before I bought it myself, I definitely thought that the reviews that I was watching were sponsored and this thing wasn't gonna be as good as it is. I'm not sponsored by DJI. DJI has never sent me a product ever. I bought this with my own money and I can absolutely say without a doubt that this is one of the best purchases that I've made in the last year or two, hands down. So I personally bought the creator kit. I'm only gonna show you two pieces from that kit right now, just because these are the two pieces that I carry with me the most. So this is obviously the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. You flick it, it turns on, the camera adjusts, you can flip the camera around and record what's in front of you, or you can flip it as a selfie cam and use it like this. It has that nice screen on the front that helps you frame up your shots, helps you to keep yourself in the frame, whatever the case is. There's a ton of settings on this guy too, so everything is fully customizable. You can change your white balance, your shutter speed, your ISO, uh, your frame rate to get the most cinematic looks. You can shoot in D-Log, so you have free range to color grade however you want. That's one of my personal favorite things is that it's so small, it fits in a pocket, hence the name Osmo Pocket 3. But then I'm able to blend this footage into the footage from my Sony's. I'm able to blend this footage into the footage from my iPhone if I wanted to. I'm able to basically mimic the look of any other camera that I might be using. So if I needed some quick B-roll, throw that in. If I'm shooting a vlog, this camera is pretty much perfect. So as you can see, it sits on its own gimbal. Everything is super, super stable for whatever type of video that you might be shooting. That's one thing. Two, it doesn't only shoot horizontally. So if I flip this back like his, hit continue, now I'm able to film vertically in 3K. Uh, if you wanna get around that and still shoot 4K, you can leave it horizontal and just film sideways. That's what I do sometimes as well. Depends on the environment, depends on what I'm trying to do. There's so much built into this guy that it's amazing to be able to carry this on an everyday basis and just shoot whenever I need to, whenever I need to. Now, as I said, I bought the creator kit, which comes with a ton of attachments. And this is the attachment that I probably use the most for a couple of reasons. Number one, you can just click it onto the bottom like this and it extends the size of the Osmo Pocket. So now someone with large mitts like me can hold it comfortably. And while you're able to hold it more comfortably, this also acts as an external charger. So you're able to get twice the battery life out of this just by having this attachment on. There's another piece that I don't carry as much, but it's a table stand. So you screw it on the bottom and now I can be wherever I am, drop this on the table. It just does so many fantastic things and again, Super, super happy that I bought this because it's been a crucial part of my everyday carries. Next up, we've got the iPad mini six. You'd be surprised how well this fits in that little bag that I got. I'm really excited that I can take this with me on the go whenever I need it, because it's definitely one of my most used devices next to my iPhone. I don't know what it is. I've noticed a resurgence of the iPad mini six videos and reviews coming out and all these people saying how great it is. And I remember when it first came out, people were hating on it, saying that one, it's overpriced, two, it doesn't have enough storage, three, it doesn't have a high refresh rate screen because it's only 60 Hertz and four, it suffers from jelly scrolling, which I don't know what, I still think it's complete BS where if you quickly scroll up and down, everything looks like jelly, like, at what point are you gonna read an article like this, scrolling up and down, trying to see the jelly scroll? Like all the things that people were complaining about, I thought weren't legitimate complaints other than the price, maybe. But you know that Apple products typically come with a little bit of a Apple tax as they like to call it. So overall though, fantastic. Could the cameras be better? Yes, but no one's taking photos except for tourists. No one's taking photos or videos on an iPad anyways. So if you're buying this and you know what your use case is, like mine is for content consumption, mine is for uh, content creation. So I use this thing when I am editing photos in Lightroom. Uh, I use it to watch pretty much anytime that I'm watching a movie or something. If it's not on the TV, I'm watching it on this guy here. I use it for music. I use it as a monitor for my camera when I'm recording videos like this. 
It just does so much if you're buying it and you know what you're going to use it for. If you're buying it because you're like, I just want to buy something new and have a new toy to play with, then you're probably not going to enjoy this as much as other people are. Um, because I think it's such, I don't want to say it's a niche product, but tablets in general are pretty niche. Most people seem to buy tablets just to, you know, give it to their kid to let their kid watch YouTube videos um, and Netflix all day. But as a productivity device, this is outstanding, especially when you pair it with the Apple Pencil. So again, this fits perfectly in my little EDC bag, slides right into the side there, and I'm able to have this with me on the go. Such a versatile and important piece of tech for me in my everyday life that there's no way that I wouldn't add this to my everyday carry. So that's the iPad mini six. So that's pretty much it for the cool stuff, all the tech. Now let's get down to the boring but still functional stuff that I carry with me on a daily basis as well. So for my wallet, this is the Nomad card wallet. The reason why I like it is because just like the leather back that I use on my iPhone, it's very, very slim. It doesn't take up much space. So whether I'm carrying this in an actual pocket or I'm carrying it in the tech bag, it doesn't take up any space at all. It fits all of my cards. I'm someone that doesn't really carry that much to begin with. So I've got my driver's license, a credit card, my debit card, a second credit card, and then on the inside, um, what's that? My health card, another debit card, and some cash there. So very slim. If you're someone that's able to, you know, reduce the amount of things that you carry, like if I look at my old wallet, one of those old folding ones, I used to have cards for everything. So many cards. I don't even know why I had so many. And once I slimmed it down, just dumbed it down to the essential cards, the ones that I use every single day and put all the other membership cards and stuff like that on my Google wallet and my Apple pay, this became amazing for me. I could put this in the back pocket, completely comfortable. It can go in a jacket pocket, side pocket, whatever. And there's no bulge where you just look weird and feel uncomfortable having this in your pocket all the time. I find that I almost tend to forget that I even have it on me. So again, this is the Nomad card wallet. It does come in different variations. So there's a larger one than this. And I think there's also a folding one as well. Again, I just went with the slimmest one because I didn't want a big footprint in my pocket. And I've been using this now for, this is year two in a bit. And you can see, again, it is kind of beat up, but with leather products, whatever, there's a term for it when leather gets beat up and it starts to look good, there's a name for it, I forget. But um, as you can tell, the more you use this, the more wear and tear that it gets, the better it looks, but none of the stitching has come apart. Everything is pretty much looking like the day that I bought it. No frayed stitches, no stitches missing, no rips or tears. Like this has been a fantastic product. I definitely stand behind the level of quality that Nomad puts out when it comes to basically anything that they create. Next up is, <laughs> uh, don't hate. So I've got a bottle of cold cream by Avene, Avene. I don't even know how to pronounce that. This, I didn't buy it myself, but the first time that I used it, I really, really liked it. And so it's been in my bag for the last year or so. Um, I'm someone that moisturizes like crazy. Like I probably go through a bottle of lotion a month just because of how much I'm moisturizing my hands and stuff, especially during times like this when it's super, super cold. So I keep this on me for those emergency moments when my hands are looking extra ashy and I need to just cream them up real quick. I don't know, it's just hand cream, I use it. And when this one runs out, I'll probably switch back to like glycomet or something like that. Just something small that fits in my bag. In keeping with the moisturizing, uh, I also carry a little tub of Vaseline. It's this, this is the Jamaican in me. For whatever reason, ever since a kid, I grew up in a Jamaican household and it was Vaseline, no Blistex, lip balms, all that. It was just straight up Vaseline and I've not been able to kick the habit. I tried using like the blue Blistex. I've tried using Burt's Bees, I've tried using uh, just the regular chapsticks. I've tried using all that stuff and nothing works as good as this does. I've read articles that say that this is terrible for you, um, that the amount of whatever petroleum jelly that you consume over the course of however many years of using this on your mouth is terrible. Hey man, I've been doing it my whole life so I can't stop now type thing. Um, I refill this as soon as it gets empty so I've probably had this actual container, this legitimate container here, I think I've had for, I wanna say about seven years now, and I just refill it every time it gets empty. So matter of fact, my lips are feeling kind of dry right now. 
good to go. All right, down to the very last item, my keys. I don't have one of those cool key carriers that everyone seems to have. I don't really carry that many keys, to be honest. All I carry is the fob for my truck. I drive a Dodge Ram. So this is the key fob there. And then you might've heard the little bit of jingling. So that jingling there is this one key. This is the only key that I carry on me on a regular basis. And this key, actually, I just got it about six months ago um, when I got a PO box. So I got a PO box for this channel uh, because I get so many packages from brands and stuff and I'm not always home um, in order to accept the deliveries. So I went, I got a PO box and this is the key for that box. I don't even use it that often because I find lately I've been home the majority of the time to receive packages. So I might even just end up taking this off my keychain and leaving it in my truck directly so that I don't have to hear this all the time because I do absolutely hate that noise. And actually there is one last thing. So anyone that knows me knows that I am constantly flossing. Like I have an issue, I think. I don't know what it is. I leave these around the house because I'm flossing so much. I got one in my lunch bag. I got like a pack in my car. I got it in my gym bag, my Muay Thai bag. Pretty much everywhere I keep these. So I keep about three or four loose ones just in the uh, Grams 28 bag as well with me at all times because I'm always toothpicking, I'm always flossing, and I just like having that on me. The second anything feels like it's stuck in my teeth, I gotta go and dig for it. And it just looks a lot better than being that guy that's doing this all the time with the fingers. Plus, it, it's this is way more sanitary to do as well, especially when you're on public transit and things like that. So I keep a ton of these on me. I've got two here. There's actually another two on the table beside me. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I just tossed everything back inside the bag as you may or may not be able to see, but that's pretty much it for me. If there's anything you think I should add to my EDC for the year or something that you think is definitely missing from this kit, please feel free to let me know down in the comments. But that is pretty much it from me. Much love as always, throwing up two of them, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.